Uh, uh, I think that's alright actually. Merci beaucoup et bienvenue au réservoir pour Music Planet Tonight sur Arte et en simultané sur WFM. Ce soir, je suis fier, je suis heureux, je suis comme un petit garçon avec ses jouets parce que ce soir, mon seul travail, c'est de vous présenter mes amis. Saffron, Republica, ça vous dit quelque chose Et Roger, Simon, Jason, Perry et Robert. Down the stairs, I stay behind the bar. And say hello, Cleveland. And, and walk towards. <laughs> to a little dog's leg. Yeah, it's a little jog. <laughs> little jog to the right. Connu sur le nom. The Cure. Pendant une heure, 100% live guarantee. Ladies and gentlemen, The Cure.
close to me. Poste de moi. Je ne crois pas qu'on pourrait être plus proche de la cure. Et c'est seulement Music Planet Tonight qui peut faire ça. C'est un moment intime, un moment sublime. Et peut-être le moment parfait pour se laisser emporter par une berceuse. Mais une berceuse, version de Cure, autrement dit, lullaby. Souvenez-vous, c'est 25 années de carrière, plus de 20 albums au total et surtout presque 30 millions de disques écoulés dans le monde. C'est un des groupes les plus influents des années 80. 
The Cure, c'est une image, celle d'adolescents torturés, une couleur, le noir et un son. Mais aujourd'hui, les Cure, c'est quoi Hello Robert. Hello. So, you're back again. Because I remember after Blood Flowers, as I'm sure most people do, you said, not for the first time, that's it, I'm gone, and this is the last time, and here you are, back again. Yeah, I think a lot of the um, end of the cure stories have, have always been instigated by me. I felt, um, before we did Blood Flowers, I was kind of heading towards 40, and we were heading towards the year 2000. They were kind of like two like, numbers that I, I felt kind of meant something. And Blood Flowers, I, I thought, would be a really good way of ending on a high. With an, you know, I thought it would be really cool for, for fans to look back and say, they made their best album, and then they stopped. You know? It would be like a really good way to stop. But, it, like I said, in the course of last year, I, I thought, why am I having this conceptual ending to something I really enjoy? I, I actually enjoyed last year's touring more than any other year I've ever had in the band since it started. So I, I got home last Christmas, and I thought, I'm not going to stop. So. So I'm now celebrating like, the idea of the next 10 years of the band and like, Greatest Hits 2 in 2025 and all that sort of stuff. Do you think that sometimes, I mean you certainly went through that period then, do you think that sometimes The Cure and what they stand for and the songs mean more to the fans than they, they had meant to you at the time? And what worries me is that I'm thinking now, perhaps why it was so good last year was because everyone thought it was the end and mm. if we do it again it won't be that good. But it's, it's been really good fun this summer, like making the acoustic the reinterpreted acoustic CD of the greatest hits and doing some new songs and doing things like this, you know, just like they're little low key, you know, they're very um, high profile events. I mean, but like, you know, playing to just like a couple of hundred people, it's sort of low key and it's, it reinforces that feeling I've got for the group. It's just really good fun and going out on stage and you saw the whole audience was thinking, at last, you know, we were having three hours of cure music. It's mm. just really good. And I, I would like to do it again, basically. That's why I'm not going to give up.
how much did you fight against the greatest hits? I mean, I know you're, you're not one of these manufactured pop bands. Let's put a load of greatest hits out and make another five million pounds. How difficult was it for you to go into 20 years of music and then choose you know, 15 songs that are going to represent you? Well, I was um, very sure in my own mind that it was going to be singles. It was going to be that kind of greatest hits. And th there are two types of greatest hits, and I thought if I go for the, what I think are the greatest hits of The Cure, they are going to be in the main quite obscure, long, nine-minute <laughs> songs. And um, the record companies who instigated the whole project are probably going to turn around and say, hello, <laughs> this isn't the greatest hits. <laughs> so I figured I'd kind of like um, go along with the, the concept of it being based around commercially successful songs. So um, I kind of stretched it a little bit either end of, of you know, the, the career of the band. Because if it was just commercial success, it would obviously, you know, it peaked. like late 80s, early 90s, and it would just be like the Kiss Me, um, Disintegration, Wish singles, mm -hmm. and there'd be a couple of stragglers, you know. So I felt that songs like A Forest, you know, it's like the start of our career as much as to like towards the end of our career, there are songs that would have been hits had they been released in the middle of our career. So it was kind of like, you know, I thought as the boss, I can just change the rules a little bit. Mm. A Forest is like a really key single for the band sold nothing really in the, in terms of like Friday I'm in Love or Lullaby. For me the, the, the best thing about listening to the songs that I wanted to put on the, on the Hits album was that only probably two of them have dated. I think The Walk and Let's Go To Bed ha have dated. Because of the sounds? Yeah, yeah, because they were the two songs that were, that were um, Let's Go To Bed was done to get played on the radio at the time so it used sounds that would get played on the radio and The Walk was done by Steve Nye, he's a great producer and had just done the Japan album and I really wanted to use him because I wanted to use this particular electronic system and only he knew how to operate it. But it's very of its time, it's very early 80s. The rest of them, thankfully, I kind of, I'm in the studio and thinking I've got this sound in my head that I want to come out of the speakers and so it's, they're not, you know, a forest sounds incredibly like could have been done at any time. It could have been our last single rather than like, uh, you know, mm. the third, so.
Surtout pas aller se coucher. Vous êtes sur Arte, vous êtes sur Music Planet Tonight. Il faut monter le volume de votre télé à fond et il faut réveiller des voisins avec de Kyo et une chanson d'amour.
love you Whatever words I say I will always love you Whatever games I play I will always love you I will always love you Thank you. Do you believe in any way of the power of music to change anything? Apart from a youth culture, just I'm a punk and then I'm a, I'm a rave, a dancer. And I think it's one, one of the sad things. That, um, it's almost used as a, has been used as a, um, a kind of a put down of the band, and me in particular over the years, that um, one of the ways you can see I haven't grown up is that I still like music. And it's, you know, because when you get older, you're supposed to have children and you're not supposed That's to like, right. listen to records anymore. And it's, right. And I still, you know, I, I still get into it. I think that the power of music it, it is there, I think, but m more for the individual. I've always felt that it moves people, and like that, if you feel there's someone else out there that feels the same way you do, it kind of empowers you. And if you go to shows, and it's what happens with Cure crowds, they kind of congregate, and there's a real sense of like, you know, communion. It's like you know, it's spiritual, but it's like it's there. You can't help but like feel, you know two hours into the show it's like tangible it's really really good mm. so I, of course I believe in it I, I think it's um it's packaged so well nowadays yeah that it, it kind of like it's very hard to get past that kind of the glib nature of the the, the musical response to world events I find myself feel like struggling not to be cynical sometimes mm. which... you've always threatened solo stuff right yeah and you haven't got any done yet you haven't done it yet when you, when you go into the studio on your own and you say, right, this, is it, does something different happen? Have you got some stuff that we haven't heard yet? I have um, I've written all the songs my solo, solo album. You've written all the songs? Hmm. They're all done. They're in a computer at home and twice I've had to put it on hold um, because I'm collaborating with people. And to do that, I have to, for the first time ever, I, have to, I can't pick up the phone and say, be there tomorrow. 8 o'clock tomorrow night, you know, because they're the people that I'm working with, I want to work with, but I haven't actually worked with yet, uh, I have with two of them, have their own careers and their own, in fact three of them of the six that I'm working with uh, are on their own albums now, so I've kind of reached the point where I have to wait even longer. So it's not that easy, you know, that's one of those, the, the songs are there, but the whole point of me doing something on my own is to see what happens when I collaborate with people outside of the band. Yeah. It's something I've wanted to do for a few years. And it, it, it arose from, my, my, as I said right at the start, my dissatisfaction with The Cure around about like 97, 98. I thought, right, I'm going to do something with other people and just start, see if it's better, see if it's me or if it's the band. And I used to think it's got to be one or the other. Like I said, you know, they, the two can't, you know, it's like antimatter and matter. They mm. can't exist in the same world. And now I think well, it's pretty easy. The band wants to do another Cure album and we've got studio time booked in the in early next year to do something. So I'm I'm you know it's going to be sort of like a race rabbit against pig actually. It's not, yeah, I was thinking rabbit against pig. Tortoise, I suppose. <laughs> it is more rabbit against pig. <laughs> Your big moment, so you steal the spotlight once again. Can I come on? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, we've got a special guest artist on this next song. He's Thank been you. trying very hard all week to learn this song. Do you excuse d'avance, huh? Eh? Oh, that false modesty is quite in the
I'm very professional, maintenant. Vous la connaissez? Saffron. Republica, ça vous dit quelque chose? Saffron, it's time for you to go and show what a real professional does and not an amateur crap person like me. Thank you. Okay? Not at all. <laughs> you were fantastic. Have fun. Thank you. Saffron!
Merci. 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 Hello, Saffron. You're on the new single, Just Say Yes. How did that happen? Did, did Robert phone you? Did you phone Robert? What yes, happened? Robert phoned me. <laughs> and it was um, very exciting. You're, lying. You're always phoning me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> now, I've been to see The Cure, um, well, I've been to see The Cure many times over the years, um, but I've gone to the Wembley show for the Blood Flowers um, gig, and it was wonderful. Oh. And um, I didn't get to see, meet Robert after that one, but um, I met him and Mary at the Smashing Pumpkins gig. And, um, and then we did um, an interview with your kind self in England. And then um, Robert gave me a call and asked if I'd do a duet with him, which was Just Say Yes. So I made it happen in a way, <laughs> <You> indirectly. <did. laughs> but you have never done a duet before, to my knowledge, have you? Uh, only with David Bowie. Only with David but Bowie. But not on the rest part of the record. No, I haven't. With The Cure, it, we've only ever had, I think, um, two proper guest artists before. Reeves on the... Uh, Reeves Cabrera was a wrong number, and Saffron. And how was he when you were in the studio? Was he like, um, do it this way, and this is the way I want it done? Or? No, he wasn't at all, actually. And um, obviously, I was uh, very nervous. And um, I met Robert, and uh, it was great because I've got some very it's good like friends. This is your life, isn't it? This is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> got some very good friends. And for some <laughs> strange reason, their nickname for me is Piglet. And Robert what had a. Gary Newman and his wife Gemma. Mm. Yeah, and uh, they're wonderful people and they call him Piglet. And Robert had a little piglet on, on you know, his um, knapsack that he had on his back. And so that sort of broke the ice Common a little ground. bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I didn't have piglet on my bag at all. That's Did completely you? made. <laughs> so we'll just make it up. <laughs> you go off and get ready and I'll stay with okay. Saffron a little while. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Mm. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> so, yeah. and when you got the call from Robert, I mean, have you been a, a long-time fan of The Cure? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny because me and my brother were talking about this the other day. It's like, um, sort of The Cure span generations and like they've always been with me. And they've always been with my brother, who's my younger brother. And it was just so fascinating and um, just a brilliant experience for me. What happened to Republica? Well, Republica is on ice at the moment. We found ourselves in a really difficult situation where we, um, the label that we assigned to collapsed and the people that had been with us for seven years and you know, believed in the band weren't there anymore. And um, we got in a situation where we couldn't release records. Um, so each of us have gone off and done other projects and I'm very lucky, you know, be honoured to sing on the Cure record and I'm, I've been doing my new band which is called Swarm and um, you know, doing other writing with other What's people. What's Swarm about? Because I've heard about it. Is that a dance project? No, it's not actually. It's um, it's a, a new band with a, a few friends of mine. Um, and I've been out in um, LA working with Danny Loner from Nine Inch Nails. I've been working with my friend Tony Halliday, who's helping me with production as well. Well, I wish you lots of luck this Thank you very much, Ray. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>
We're going to leave it there, but I'm just going to end on one little freestyle thing, very quick fire questions, just that I wrote earlier. Okay? What would you say was your principal default? Uh, my inability to respond quickly to <laughs> quick fire questions. <laughs> and when did you last cry? And why? Um, I took my mum and dad out for my mum's 80th birthday a couple of weeks ago and I cried at the end of that because I was so happy. Which religion, if any, makes the most sense to you? Uh, I think if the world as a whole could outlaw religion for one year, people would be really amazed at how happy the place could be. Mm -hmm. I think religion is the worst invention of man in the history of man. Now your house is burning down. What are the three things that you rush in and save? My teddy bear. My teddy bear. <laughs> Um, I've, so tough, I've faced this in the past. When we, when we went to do disintegration, um, the studio we were in burnt down on the first night we were there. And I went back in with Dave Allen, the producer, and the band in a human chain to get my lyrics. Because mm. it was in the days before computers, almost. <laughs> well, I didn't have one anyway. And uh, the words were in a leather satchel. I remember like, going across the choking to death with a wet towel out around my face, trying yeah. to find where the words And only I knew where I'd put them because we just checked into the studio about like an hour before. Um, so I'd probably say something really weird that was important to me at that moment, what, uh, what I was working on, something really stupid and after I think, why? Because the firemen gave me such a bollock. Did they? Why do you go back in there? Sure, what do you go back in there? These are my words. It's <laughs> taking me a year to write these words. So, um, actually, but I would like to save all the photos that I've got, but it would, I'd burn to death. So I'd probably save my wedding album photos. Oh. And then um, thirdly, I don't know really. There isn't a third thing. Mary. Oh, is, is she in the house? She's in the house. Oh, so she can <laughs> tell me that. <laughs> She's standing out in the garden laughing. I just made it up. <laughs> What's your favourite word? Yes. Least favourite word? No. What, what, if anything, do you want written on your gravestone? Have you decided? Too old to be alternative, too alternative to be old.
Merci, merci. C'est la fin. Thank you very much. See you in Paris next year. Merci. A bientôt.